Hey guys, today we're learning about the properties of equality and we're using those to justify each of the steps in solving an equation. So you've had a lot of experience solving equations in seventh grade and then again in eighth grade and we started solving equations with variables on both sides. We've talked about the distributive property, but now there are more properties of equality that you've actually already been using. We're just going to start calling them by their names today. We're also still going to be focusing on making sure that our ability to solve equations is strong. So this is something that you have to master in order to move on in eighth grade math. So I want to make sure that you get lots of practice. Let's look at this first one. So remember, my ultimate goal of solving an equation is to get a value for x. And so that means that my x's can only exist on one side of the equal sign. Usually I'm looking for my variable to equal a constant or a number that's by itself. Here I have 6x on the left and 2x on the right. Then I have a negative 3 on the left and a positive 1 on the right. So all of my x's aren't occurring on the same side of the equal sign. Remember last week we visually represented this with the balance or the seesaw. And we talked about if you take or add something to one side, you have to take or add the same thing to the other side. One of our rules is that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. Okay, so there are several options when we're looking at this first equation, and I think that might be why some students struggle in the beginning with solving equations. There are multiple ways to solve. So if you want to subtract 2x from both sides first, great. If instead you see that you want to add 3 to both sides, great. If you want to subtract 1, great. If you want to subtract 6x, great. As long as you're using inverse operations to manipulate, you are doing perfectly fine. I can tell you, though, that the more I have solved these, the more I figured out that I want to stay as positive as I possibly can. So let's just think about, let's take some private think time to envision what would happen if I took 6x away on the left and the right. How many x's would I have left on the right side of my equation if I said 2x minus 6x? Mm, that would put me in the negatives. I'm not a big fan of being in the negatives unless I have to be, right? So instead, I'm going to decide to take away 2x from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 2x here, and I'm going to subtract 2x over here. That leaves me with 4x minus 3 equals 1. Now all of my variables are on one side. Perfect. So now I just have to isolate it. So first, let's add 3, and we get 4x equals 4. And then your very last step, this one's easy to recognize, you should divide, and x equals 1. So let's go back and talk about the properties of equality. You've already used the distributive property several times, so let's talk about the other ones. So the first one that I used when I took 2x from both sides was the subtraction property of equality, right? I subtracted. So the properties of equality are named after the operation, so they're really easy to remember. The subtraction property tells me that if A equals B, or if the left side of an equation equals the right, that means if I take away the same exact thing on the left and the right, they'll still stay equal. That makes sense, right? We've talked about what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So if you're taking something away from the left, you have to take that same thing away from the right. After I subtracted, then I added the three. I added three to both sides. That's the addition property. That's saying that if A equals B and we add something to one side, we can add the same thing to the other side and stay equal. Then I divided by 4, and you probably guessed it, that's the division property of equality. So that tells me that if A equals B, I can divide by C on both sides and stay equal. Okay, let's go down to the next example. 1 fifth x equals 12. I'm actually going to erase this division property definition so that I make sure I have enough room to solve the equation for you. Okay, so here we have a rational coefficient. Remember what the word rational means? A rational number can be expressed as a fraction of two integers. So here the coefficient on my variable is 1 fifth. Well, that's rational. 1 fifth x equals 12. I'm trying to get the x all by itself. So most of the work is done for us right here. We're just missing the last step. A coefficient on a variable, remember, represents multiplication. So this you could say is 1 fifth times x. So in order to undo that, I need to divide both sides by 1 fifth. 
And maybe you're thinking like something about that is funny. When we divide fractions, I seem to remember something about that. There was probably a teacher um, at some point in your life that told you when you divide fractions, you should keep change flip. But now that you're in eighth grade, we're no longer saying keep change flip. Instead, we're saying multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so let's talk about 12 divided by one fifth. If you need to put the one under your whole number, your denominator of your whole number, if you need to write down a one, that's good. Great. Do what you got to do. Okay, so let's talk about when we divide fractions, we actually are multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one fifth is five. So I'm just looking to solve 12 times five, which is 60. So X equals 60. That means if we plug it back in, one fifth of 60 is equal to 12. Perfect. Now let's talk about the property of equality that I used. I divided. That means I used the division property of equality. So the names of the properties aren't hard to remember, right? Let's just think about the operation that you're doing and then name it that property. Okay, let's do the next example. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. So now we are distributing rational numbers, right? So now I am sharing the three-fourths and the negative two-thirds with everything that belongs in the parentheses, everything in the parentheses on each of their respective sides. So that means that I'm only going to distribute the three-fourths to the set of parentheses on the left, and I'm only going to distribute the negative two-thirds to the parentheses on the right. Okay, so let's think about multiplying with fractions. So here's the mental math that I, that I do in my head. Three-fourths of 24. So I'm thinking about if I had 24 items and I split them into four groups. I would have six items in each group because 6, 12, 18, 24. So three of those groups would make a total of 18 items. So it's a positive 18. Now let's look at three-fourths of negative 16. So if I have negative 16 split into four groups, I know that there's going to be negative 4 in each group. Three of those groups would make negative 12, and that's married to my x. Okay, now let's do the right side. Two-thirds of 12. So if I take 12 things and I split them into three groups, I will have four items in each group. Two of those groups make eight total items, and this one is a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative. Okay, and then let's distribute the negative two-thirds to the 36. I know it's going to be negative because I have a negative times a positive, and I'm thinking about 36 being split into three groups. Each group would have 12 items. Two of those groups would make 24. Okay, so now I'm ready to solve. I have simplified as much as I can on each side of the equal sign. So now I'm ready to solve, which means now I'm ready to use inverse operations. Remember that the ultimate goal is to get all of my variables on one side and all of my constants on the other. So here I have several options. You can add 12x's, you could add 8x's, you could add 24, or you could subtract 18. I'm thinking it might be best to add 12 X's to both sides because remember that I want to stay as positive as I can and I'm thinking that that will make my X's all the way positive. So let's add 12 X to both sides. And while I'm doing this, let's think about the property of equality that I just used. I just added 12 X to both sides, so I just used the addition property of equality. That leaves me with 18 equals 4 X minus 24. All of my variables are now on one side, so that's perfect. Now I'm ready to add back my 24 to both sides. So when I add 24 to the right and I add 24, again, I'm using the addition property of equality. So let's think about 24 plus 18. 24 plus 20 would be 44. So 24 plus 18 is just 42. So this is 42 equals 4x. So this one I made up in my head. It was a mental problem. And so when we divide, we're not going to get a pretty whole number. It's going to be a fraction. Your last step here is to divide by 4. So 42 divided by 4 is going to be equal to x. Then let's make sure that we know our properties of equality. So I use the addition property twice. And then finally, I use the division property to make sure I could isolate my variable. Okay, just two problems left. 
Here we should distribute our three tenths to everything that's in the parentheses. Or now you know how to get rid of that by doing the fast distributive way <laughs> from yesterday. So why don't you pause the video and take a minute to solve this one by yourself? Unpause it when you're ready to check your work. So I'm gonna decide to divide by three tenths on both sides because I think that's faster than distributing. That leaves me with x plus two equals, and then I'm thinking about 12 divided by three tenths, which is actually 12 times 10 over three. 12 times 10 is 120. Three times one is three. Now I need to know 120 divided by three. Well, 12 divided by three is four, so 120 divided by three must be 40. Then I'm ready to subtract two, and x equals 38. That means if I plug 38 back into my original equation for x, my left side of my equation will equal my right side of my equation. Okay, let's look at the last question. So this one's gonna, um, this one's gonna challenge you to think by yourself and then use what you know about writing and solving equations to actually figure out the answer to the question. So I'm gonna read it to you first and I want you to just follow along. A regular pentagon and an equilateral triangle have the same perimeter. The perimeter of the pentagon is five times the quantity of one half x plus two inches. The perimeter of the triangle is four times the quantity of x minus two inches. What is the perimeter of each figure? So first, why don't you take some private think time to just consider how you would set up this problem and then what steps you would go through in order to solve. Okay, so it tells us we have two shapes. We've got a pentagon and a triangle, and they have the same perimeter. So that's a really important point. They have the same perimeter. Remember that perimeter means the outside, like you're building a fence around the shape, right? There's a difference between perimeter and area. Okay, so if they are the same, I can set them equal to each other. So I'm going to do 5 times 1 half x plus 2 equals 4 times the quantity of x minus 2. Okay, now I need to distribute on both sides of the equal sign. So the 5 needs to be shared to the negative 1, or to the 1 half x, I don't know where I saw a negative, and the 2. And then the 4 needs to be shared to the x and the negative 2. So let's go ahead and share. 5 times 1 half is 5 halves. That belongs to the x. 5 times 2 is 10. Then I have 4x minus 8 on the right side. Okay, so we have a couple options here, right? There are actually four things that you can do that would all be acceptable here. They all have to do with making sure you use inverse operations to manipulate. I'm going to decide to subtract 5 halves x from both sides. So if I'm subtracting 5 halves from here and subtracting five halves from here, I'm left with just a 10, and then I know I have the negative eight on the end, so let's do four minus five halves. So five halves is two and a half, right? So four, take away two and a half, leaves me with just one and a half left over, or three halves. So this is gonna be three halves x. Then in order to isolate x, I need to add 8 to both sides, and that'll give me 18 equals 3 halves x. And then lastly, I need to divide, and I need to divide both sides by 3 halves. Remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So 18 times 2 is 36, divided by 3 is 12, so x equals 12. Now let's go back and look at what our question is asking us. Our question is asking us for the perimeter. They're not asking us for the value of x. So remember our perimeter is given by these expressions. So we just need to pick one to plug our value back into so we can actually solve. Well, I think the perimeter of the triangle would be much easier to solve for, so let's use that one. So I'm gonna use four times the quantity of x minus two and I'm gonna substitute the value that I just found for x in order to actually find that perimeter value. So four times the quantity of 12 minus two. 12 minus two is 10, and four times 10 is 40. So here your answer choice should be D, but do you see the distractor?
I think there are definitely some students out there and maybe even some not students who would have seen X equals 12. Oh, A has 12 inches. Perfect. That's